Hi, I'm Lisa Ann Floyd, and I'm going to take you through an activity that I like to do with students to help them to learn the value of debugging and also to understand how two dimensional shapes are drawn using coding. So you can see I have this activity sheet up, which I will share beneath this video. It's called Debugging Two Dimensional Shapes. So at the top it says Beetle is learning how to draw shapes in Scratch by coding them. Beetle has made a few logic errors. Help to debug Beetle's programs. I've included some links, and each of these links are programs that have errors in them, and students will need to debug each of those programs. In doing so, they will not only learn a little bit about coding um, and the importance of making sure there are no errors um, and the importance of debugging as well as a skill when you're coding, but they will also be learning about geometric properties. Let's take a look at the first example. The good thing about these is if ever you make a, a mistake or you can't figure out how to reset the program, you can just click on this link again. So I'm going to click on this link and it will take me to a program. I'm going to make my code a little bit bigger by clicking on this little plus on the bottom right hand side of my code editing area. You can see I've written a comment and it says, oh no, Beetle has made an error. Can you debug this program so that Beetle draws what was intended? Let's try it out by clicking the green flag. It says, watch me draw a square. And then it doesn't quite draw a square. So we have to look carefully at the code. You can see on this bottom part here, it repeats four because there's four sides and four vertices to a square. It moves forward 100 steps, so that's the side length of the square, and then it rotates 80 degrees. And many students will be able to say, well, actually, it's 90 degrees that we need to rotate. So we can go ahead and make that change in our code and run it again and see what happens. There we go. Now we have our square. So let's try the next example. We have debugging equilateral triangle. So we'll click on the link. It would take us to some pre-written code that we can alter. In the comment it says, oh no, Beetle has made an error. Debug the code so that Beetle draws what was intended. So let's try running it to see what happens. So it draws three lines. And you can see the repeat does have three, but it doesn't quite draw what we wanted. It doesn't look like a triangle. You can see in our code, it moves 100 steps and then it moves 150 degrees. So 150 degrees looks like it's too much because it's over. Um, it's not making the, the triangle that we're looking for. So let's try reducing that. Uh, now, some of your students might know that the exterior angle of a triangle is 120 degrees, um, and that's actually the value we need here. So let's run the code. So now we've debugged it so that we have a triangle. It might take people a few times, um, but eventually students do tend to get it right. If they mess up the code too much, they can just go back to this link here, this document, and go to the link again, and it will reset the program. Now we will take a look at the hexagon. So we'll click on the third link. It takes us to debugging hexagon. I'll make my code bigger so I can see it a little bit better. And I'll read the comment. It says, oh no, Beetle has made two errors. <laughs> Debug the program so that Beetle draws what he intended. So in this case, we can see that the sides there's only five sides um, because the repeat has five, which means there will only be five sides and five vertices. Well, let's run the program and just check. So you can see, watch me draw a hexagon and it draws five sides. We also know that the angle is wrong as well. So let's first start off by changing the sides to six. So the repeat to six will make it so that we do have our five sides and five vertices, but again, the angle's not quite right. It's a little bit too small. So let's try increasing that angle a little. So I'm gonna try changing it to 60. And what I do know is that the exterior angle of a hexagon is, of an equilateral hexagon is 60, um, which means the interior angle is 120, 120 plus 60 equals 180. So let's try running that.
There we go. You'll also notice that the color changes in this one. And that's because we made it so it changes the pen color um, by 25. There's 200 different colors in Scratch. Um, it changes the pen color every time it draws a new side for the hexagon. Let's look at one more example together. We'll take a look at debugging the circle pattern. And you can see actually in the explanation here, I say there is more than one solution to Beetle's problem. And it's, an, it's great if you can challenge students to find someone else in the class who's debugged the program in a different way. So we'll click on this link to get to some existing code. Now that we're on the link, I'll make the code a little bit big, bigger and we can alter it now. But before we alter it, let's run it and see what the problem is. It says that Beetle is supposed to draw a circle of circles. Okay, but it appears it is only drawn a half circle of circles. So in this case, we have something called a nested loop, a nested event. There are There is one loop inside of another loop. The inside loop is what makes the circle. So the circles are working, the individual circles. We have a repeat of 36 and it's moving 10 and rotating 10. So 10 times 36 is 360. So it, we, we know that it's making that full circle for the individual circles. Our outer circle, however, is repeating six and rotating 30 degrees each time. So if you multiply six by 30, we get 180. So there's where we're getting the half circle from. So as I mentioned, there's two different ways to fix this problem. I'm going to change the six to a 12 and I'll run my program again. And now I'll see what happens. Now we have a full circle of circles. I did mention, as I said, that there is another way to fix this. So let's change this back to six. So now we'll have the half circle of circles. And instead of changing it to 12 circles, let's keep it at six, but then change this, re this turn inside. So every time it draws a circle, rather than rotating 30 degrees in between each circle, let's rotate 60. And notice that the product of 60 and 6, so 60 times 6, is 360. So we should end up with a full circle of circles again. But rather than having 12 circles, we're going to have 6. If we return back to our document, you can see that there are a couple of other challenges for you. They get a little bit more difficult as we go through. But I find that students um, will have the, as long as they have the chance to try many different ways and, and a lot of attempts, they'll eventually get the right answer and they feel really good about it when they do. Good luck with all of that.